welcome to Children's Church. We're glad you're back today. We're going to start like we start every time with a candle. Remember why we start with a candle, Miss Laura? It reminds me of God's presence. Does that remind you of God's presence? <laughs> That's right. And if you have a candle at home you'd like to light, just ask your parents first. And we usually start with an opening prayer. Oh, can I say the opening prayer today? Does it involve a duck? Uh, no ducks, but it is a song. All right, I'm in. Okay, stand up. Everybody at home, stand up. You ready? It's sort of like a blessing, like we used to do before dinner when my sister was little, but I've made it about children's church instead of about food. And I think God likes our prayers, all the different ways that we do them. It goes like this. Thank you, God, for sunshine and for the gentle rain. Thank you, God, for children's church. Thank you, God, for everything. Amen. Thanks for that new prayer, Miss Laura. I like that song. Hey, since we're already up, we might as well work on our scripture. It's the same one we've been doing all month. It's in Matthew. Do you remember if that's in the Old or New Testament? Miss Laura? <gasps> it's in the New Testament. That's right. Is that the front or the back of the Bible? Miss Laura, back. <laughs> you almost had me there. That's a tricky one. All right, so it's from Matthew in the New Testament, and it, we're going to start in our loudest voices, middle voices, whisper voices. Okay. He is not here. He is risen. He is not here. He is risen. He is not here. He is risen. Good job. We're going to enter into a moment of silent prayer. We'll let you pause the video to decide how long that is for your family. Amen. Thanks for saying our prayer with us. Miss Carrie, did you set this up again today? Yes, I always set it up. Well, I'm very grateful for that, but it's white again. Does that mean it's still Easter? Still Easter, 50 days, Miss Laura, and I think it's only been a couple of weeks. Still Easter. Well, I have no idea what we're gonna talk about today because we covered it all last week. Remember, we had the eggs. That's the big one, right? Easter, eggs, that's the Easter symbol. Eggs are for Easter. I think there's another symbol you might be forgetting. Is it the duck? I brought the duck last <laughs> week. I do love the duck. I was thinking more of the... Oh, the cross. The cross started off as kind of a sad symbol. If you remember on Good Friday, it reminded us that Jesus had died. But as we learned on Easter and with your amazing flowering of the cross, that Jesus did not stay dead. So this empty cross is actually a symbol of hope. A symbol of Oh. And you know what's cool? I do see crosses. Like we have this children's church cross here. And so I see crosses a lot of places, especially when I'm here at church. But I also see crosses just at my house, the way the window panes come together or a ceiling tile. Have you ever seen a cross in an unexpected place? I see crosses all over the place. When I was a teenager, um, me and my friends from church had this thing that we called the God book. And we'd write down where we saw signs of God's love or hope throughout the day. And it was like a journal that we all shared. Maybe you could do that with your family. Anyway, one of my friends wrote down that he saw God in his French fries. <laughs> I think you could see a cross in your French fries. He you said wanted. that's what it was. He dumped out his French fries and two of them fell in a little cross shape. And it reminded him of hope and Jesus' love. Our whole church family right now is doing a thing where we look for signs of hope. And I've seen a lot of good chalk art. I love it. That's a great way to share hope with your neighbors. But where else do you see hope? Do you see hope in crosses or things that people make or in nature? Send us some pictures of where you see signs of hope. Here's my new masterpiece, but wait, it's not just a bunch of paint. I'm excited about this. Oh, you might have done this before, and you can definitely do this at your house with some paint. Or maybe even on a window. You paint it all over. Take your cross with tape, paint it all over. Ta-da! Empty cross. Lots of hope. It's beautiful. I'm going to take a picture of that as my symbol of hope and turn it in. 
but I see another empty cross right here. Check oh, it out. Look at that. Empty yeah. cross. And I already know this story of the empty cross because we've already been talking about it for weeks and weeks and weeks. It's been almost Easter and then it's been Easter for so long. So I can tell you this story myself. Empty cross. But that's not the beginning of the story. First, there is Jesus. He's a person and he's walking with his feet on the earth. And he has some friends and he super loves them. <laughs> and he's telling people about God's love. And while he's walking around and loving people, there are some people who don't like him very much. And that's how we get to the cross part. But that's okay, because God's always there. This is exciting. Jesus got resurrected. That means he was alive again after he had been dead in the tomb. But he was resurrected and we were all so excited. And that is the story of Easter. Any questions? <laughs> That is an awesome way to use these symbols, Miss Laura. I got to use these symbols this week for some holy listening with a couple of our friends that are at home from church. And so I like using them with a story. But do you want to try holy listening with me while we have these out? Holy listening sounds hard. Nope, it's super easy, super fast. It's only even two questions. I can answer two questions. I just told a whole story. Let's do it. <laughs> I think it's easier than that. Okay, I'm going to sit down. So, Miss Laura, we have all of these symbols to choose from, and I'm going to just ask you how you're doing today. So, I want you to look at these little choices, and they can mean anything you want. Some of them look like things you recognize, but they can be anything you want. Just pick maybe two or three and tell me why you picked them and how that describes how you're doing today. Hmm. Okay. I'm going to pick Sleepy Eyes and Raindrop. And this arrow. Excellent. So tell me about the sleepy eyes. Why did you pick sleepy eyes? I picked sleepy eyes because I went running yesterday and I tried to run faster than I usually do <laughs> and it made me very sleepy. That's exciting. I'll hold that one. What about your arrow? Um, my arrow is because my day has been kind of busy and it feels like it's always time for the next thing and the next thing and the next thing and there's kind of nothing in between. And so the arrow is pointing to like, what's the next thing after this? It seems like something else is coming fast. Some days are that way. And the raindrop or teardrop? What it's a raindrop see? today. Just because it's been kind of rainy today, but I chose to sit outside on my porch anyway. And there's a roof, but I got a little wet. Excellent. So thanks for sharing how you're doing today. And then the second question, the last question, we're going, I'll put these back. You can still pick them if you want, but you're gonna pick another two or three or the same ones and tell me a prayer that you have that you wanna share with God today. Hmm. I'm gonna pick the exclamation point again. And I'm gonna pick the sunshine. And Hmm, this is a tricky one. <laughs> I think I'm going to pick oh, the broken heart one. All right, and since we close Children's Church with a prayer, usually we're going to let this holy listening prayer be the end of our Children's Church too. Okay, so tell me why you picked those and what the prayer is for God today. This is my prayer for God today. I picked the broken heart because God, please be with people who feel like their heart is breaking or who are feeling sad during coronavirus time. And then I picked the sunshine because I pray that everyone will feel the joy and the warmth of God's love through the people around them and the sunshine and beautiful nature. And then I picked the exclamation point because I'm so thankful and excited that y'all have been here with us today and that God is always with us. Thanks for sharing that prayer. Amen. Amen.